Okay, um, like to review and improve the minutes from April 10th. I know a few people were out. And I have to do a roll call on this. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. Thank you, Judy. Second. I'll second okay. that, Judy. Olivia, thank you. Bob, yes. Bill? Bill Smith? I'll say yes. I, I wasn't there, but I just would like to say that those minutes were like the best pandemic minutes I've seen yet. <laughs> <laughs> they were they really gave a great flavor of what was discussed and the whole just you know I felt like I was there seriously yeah it's, in a, a little bit of um just a strategy guys uh, if you do control d it drops it turns your mic on and off it's sometimes easier than trying to get that mouse to land on the button oh, uh bill smith hello bill bill We'll skip Bill Judy now. Bob Decker. Bob, yes. Mr. Bob. I'm sorry. Bob, Damien. Yes. Lynn. Yeah. Uh, Phil. Am I here now? Yes, sir. Uh, you, yep. Okay. You're, we're approving the minutes. Yes, for you. Yeah, I've got it staying on it. I wasn't there, Bob. Okay. Uh, Keith. Staying. Mary. Yes. And Olivia. Yep. Okay. Bob, uh, I did vote. We'll turn it over to Shelly. Can you find the statement, Jelly? Yep. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Can I All right. Say, hold on. Uh, Darius said something about if you guys aren't talking, if you, everybody can just mute it, and that way we're not getting different noises and stuff, and different people are popping up on the screen. That way, just Shelly's popping up on the screen, and she's the one that's talking. Right. Okay, so we we had 17 warrants in April, totaling one million nine hundred thirteen thousand seventy one dollars and eighty cents. I believe Mr. Decker may have signed those today. If not, is in conversation with Donna um, Lloyd about going in to sign them. Uh, and the general fund and school choice expense reports were sent out through April 30th electronically already. Um, and since we last met, I've been working on an analysis of the general fund budget uh, to estimate our remaining expenditures through the end of the year. We currently have available just over 700,000 in the budget to be spent before June 30th, uh, and that we will have about 310,000 of that remaining at the end of the year due to frozen expenditures. Um, and the budget subcommittee has had several conversations regarding the use of those funds and their relationship to excess and deficiency, as well as other revolving sources such as school choice. Um, so we're looking at spending almost 430,000 um, roughly between now and the end of the school year. Um, and then in, there's more information on this. Um, we're gonna be talking a little bit further when we talk about FY21. And so I'll get into some more details when we get into that conversation. Um, but also just a note uh, that we are looking like state and local revenues will be down. Um, the reduction amount is unknown, but we can anticipate that Chapter 70 funding and transportation reimbursement could be reduced. Um, our state required member town contributions could be modified once the state comes out with their budgets and does their Chapter 70 formula calculations. Um, and we do have several towns already requesting reductions in their assessments. Um, it's really hypothetical numbers and there's some inconsistency with it from town to town. So there's a lot of questions right now. Um, but the bottom line is that the of the 2.84% increase that we did already approve for the budget, um, we are gonna have to make some reductions moving forward just to be responsible to the crisis. Uh, and again, the subcommittee is in conversation and there'll be more information about that when we get to that. Uh, agenda item in a little while. 
Any any questions right now about the market with Shelly? Okay. Uh, yep. I did. Sign, I did sign all those vouchers warrants this, this morning, so they're all signed. Thanks, Bob. But I have a question. Uh, we should be thinking about if we're going to squirrel any money away. We should be thinking about the post. Uh, you know, our retired employees and the obligations we have there. We put a hundred thousand in that fund a year or so ago, and. Uh, we should be thinking about putting some more money there to avoid the 5% if we have any money left over. Should be done before June 30th. It can come right out of this year's budget. Well, Shelly's going to – Shelly, we'll be talking about it later on, Bob, with the with the, with the FY21 budget, okay? Okay, but I just don't want to lose it. Yeah. We're going to talk to you a little bit later. Uh, is there any public comment? Any public that want to say anything? Allison. Okay. No student report. I, I don't see a student on with us. No student. Unfinished business. We're going to talk further discussion about the FY21 voted budget. And I'll let Darius or Shelly talk about it. Darius, do you want to start? Part of the introduction. So we met with the budget subcommittee twice, um, once last week and once prior to this meeting. Um, <clears throat> I've been in, in contact with, you know, as many of you have been with town officials, and I think there were towns were looking for, obviously, we built our budget prior to COVID crisis. Um, and so we are looking at adjusting our budget um, to give some relief to the towns as people are trying to figure out the um, Try to figure out the how to move forward in um, with financing and such with the finances and such. Um, so Shelly will walk through where we're at, um, and I think kind of hear her through her presentation. There's and it, she'll answer. I think it answers a lot of the questions as she goes through it, um, and then we can kind of take it from there. So I guess go ahead, Shelly. Do you want to share your screen again, or do you want me to just talk through it? I'm going to share my screen. I think people probably found that. Um, Visually pleasant? No, they, I think they found it uh, kind of easy to. Uh, it was to easy to. Follow. It was easy to follow. Well, it's so much smaller this time because there's more people on. At least it looks smaller on my end. Yeah, it looks the same size on mine. Uh, okay. Change your. Don't go. Don't do the. Uh, Get out, screen, get out of the tile view. Yeah. Okay. Can everybody, you know, and I'll increase the size of this a little bit. That's good. Okay. Um, I did share. Did I share this with everyone? No, I think I only shared it with the subcommittee, but I can share it out with the whole group. Um, that way, you have a, a hard copy of it as well. Um, but the top section here talks about the FY20 budget, and then we're going to get into FY21. So uh, our available budget, as I said in that brief financial update, we're looking at having roughly 738000 available to spend between now and June 30th. Um, we're estimating that we're going to spend 428000 of that, which includes an additional 40000 for technology needs. Um, that is to repair some Chromebooks and devices that are being used and borrowed by students right now, um, as well as purchasing some new devices so that we have adequate technology for next school year as we start to plan for what returning to school looks like in the fall. Um, so our estimated savings or frozen expenses totals 310,000 right now. Um, and that would be the number that we would be looking to roll into um, E&D, like Mr. Decker pointed out, or finding another way to um, utilize those funds for, to support for next year. Uh, so an excess and deficiency update, we currently have a balance of 312,000 in excess and deficiency, which is certified for FY20. Um, that includes almost 85,000 of capital projects that have not yet been completed. Um, when we stopped the, uh, when we froze budgets, we also froze any capital improvements. So um, that has not yet been spent, about 85,000 of that. So we're currently looking at having 312,000 available in this year's excess and deficiency. Now, normally what would happen with E&D is that 
your balance that was certified in your current year, anything that remains would roll over into the calculation for to be certified the following year. However, um, Massachusetts Division of Local Certified Local Services just modified the law around E and D. And if a regional district does not have an approved budget by June thirtieth, you can now carry over your entire balance from the current year for use in FY21 and then still certify an additional 5% on top of that. So um, if we were in a position where we don't have a budget approved by June 30th, we can carry that full 312 over to support next year's expenditures and then also certify up to 573,000 on top of that. Um, we're not looking at having that 5%. If that's the case, we're looking at only having about 310,000. Um, if we do get a budget approved by June 30th, then the circumstances would be different. We would be slightly over that 5%. So we would be looking to make some changes. Um, probably the safest route for us to go, knowing that we are gonna be looking at some reductions to local budget would be to uh, reallocate some of our school choice expenses back onto general fund to help reduce that balance and increase our school choice account so that we can further support next year. Um, there's a couple financial considerations for this year that we're considering right now. Uh, one of that is in support of our school lunch program. So our school lunch program currently has very little revenue coming in. There is some state reimbursement. However, it is not enough to cover the wages that we're continuing to pay. Um, so one of our options is to supplement those salaries and wages so that the school lunch program does not have to go into next school year with either a zero balance and certainly we won't, don't want them to have a deficit. So that's one thing for us to consider. Um, and then I did just talk about this reallocating the school choice expenses over to the general fund. Um, so moving on to FY21. Uh, our previously approved budget was just shy of 11.8 million. It was an increase of 2.84%. Um, that increase was comprised of uh, salary and wage increases for teachers, IAs, and non-union personnel. It also included the hire of an English teacher and a, a board certified behavior analyst to support the special education department. Um, we had some other minor expense increases as well, but this is the bulk of that 326,000 that you all already approved. Um, this is a little bit repetitive from my earlier report, but we do expect that state and local revenue will be down for FY21. The reduction amount is unknown, but we can anticipate some reduction in uh, Chapter 70 funding and some transportation reimbursement. And our towns have, are, are also asking for a reduction to their assessment. The um, subcommittee met last week to start this conversation in preparation for this meeting and also met again today prior to this meeting and uh, did decide to move ahead with looking at what the numbers would be for a level funded budget, uh, which would mean that we would reduce the current approved budget of almost 11.8 million by 326,000 down to 11,466,000. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, we took a look at what was added and started reducing at that point. Um, we did eliminate the English teacher new hire and the BCBA new hire. Now those are positions that certainly the school needs and would love to have moving forward. However, the administration is working out plans to continue without those two positions. Um, and it, it wouldn't compromise any of the existing programs that we're offering. I would. Um, let George or Sarah talk a little bit more about that if you have questions at the end. Um, we also had an IA who resigned recently. She was a long-term sub this school year and is going back to school and not coming back. So that provided an opportunity for us to eliminate an IA position. Again, it's a need of the school, but the timing just worked out where we could make the decision to not fill that position to save some additional money there. And then we also brought down all non-salary expenses back to FY20 level funding where possible. Um, and then these three pieces, 15,000 to technology, 5,000 for our special education summer program staffing, and 3,000 to athletic field maintenance were the larger of the non-salary cuts that I looked at. 
Um, so there are some other small ones that I brought back down. And then there were some ones such as trash that, you know, we didn't have the trash expense in FY20 because we had a change in our trash vendor. So we had to add that back in for FY21. So not everything could be brought fully down to level. So um, what we're currently looking at is uh, we have reduced the budget right now by 215000 which is a reduction of 1.88%. And we are still looking at uh, an increase of 110,000 that we would need to reduce or fund elsewhere to get the budget down to level funding. And the primary source of that increase is due to raises for non-union and union personnel. Um, so we do have school choice funds that could further support those reductions. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about what that number is. Um, or the option would be to make additional cuts, which would include some personnel and potential programming changes. Uh, the next section here talks about the assessment uh, to each of our towns. If we were to go to a level funded budget, there is a savings of an average about 4% for each of our member towns if we do a level funding budget. I'm not gonna read through all those numbers, but they are there for you to look at. And then we have some additional concerns going into FY21. So the first piece that I've talked about and kind of gone over really addresses uh, the level funding addresses the town reduction, what their assessment in. But what it doesn't address is that if Chapter 70 were, were to be reduced, that is a revenue source directly to Frontier. So if it cuts our Chapter 70 funding or our transportation reimbursement, by any amount, um, and I gave you some examples here. So a 10% chapter 70 reduction is 287,000. And if we were to lose a quarter of our current reimbursement, we'd be looking at losing 100,000 of transportation. So if we do have additional cuts after this level funded budget is approved and we adjust the town assessment, um, if the state budget comes out and shows us that we have to make some further reductions, we will have to make some decisions to fund from other funding sources or to um, cut at that point, which would definitely be personnel cuts if we're looking at another $400,000 potentially. Um, there's two other factors. Uh, we have potential out of district placement increasing by 130,000. And then as we prepare to go back to school, not really knowing the full picture of what that looks like yet, there could be an additional 20 to 50,000 in expenses for whether it's cleaning products, additional technology needs, if we need to hire a new nurse because we have to take temperatures every day. Um, you know, there's a variety of things that we could be looking at that are unknown at this point. And so there's still a lot of questions, um, but the bottom line is we're trying to take a proactive approach to supporting our towns and face um, what the reality is to come, even though some of those numbers are unknown. Um, so some of our options here, if we don't want to make additional cuts to the budget, if those funding sources are reduced by the state, uh, we do have free cash such as E&D and &D school choice. Um, so we have the 312,000 that we're looking at for the current year remaining balance. Um, we have an estimated 310 that we're looking at available for uh, the current year to be certified. And then we have school choice funds of 993,000 available to us as well. Um, so I think when you think about the numbers and you think, wow, you're cutting 300,000 to begin with, and then we're potentially talking about, you know, another 300,000, if not more on top of that from the state, you know, I just want to point out that Frontier is in a good position of having funds available for a rainy day fund. Um, and with the state's change in this regulation regarding E&D, that's certainly helpful to us as well. Um, so I gave you a lot of information and I went through it pretty quickly, so I'm happy to take questions. Or if I missed anything, Darius, you know, jump in there, George. No, we've gone through it enough, enough times where I think that was perfect. <laughs> but questions there may be out there, that's for sure. Just raise your hand if you want to talk. Well, no one's raising their hand. So just to, to be a little bit more clear in case I wasn't clear, I, I and somebody on the bill or somebody else on the subcommittee, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what we're looking to do tonight is to have a budget change approved to level fund at $11,466,392. 
That is correct. That's what we talked about in the budget subcommittee meeting about preparing, having this committee vote a number and prepare a number that we can deliver to the four towns because it looks as though they want to proceed with adopting their budgets. So we need to present the four towns with a the same figure. So we're all voting on the same thing whenever the town meetings take place in June. Bob. Yeah, Bill. I mean, Bob. Question I have is I think the proper procedure is is to modify what we passed at the February meeting, was it? Or was it the March meeting? To move the new number. Uh, the eleven million four what was it? Four sixty? Four sixty six three ninety two. Yeah. We need to make a motion to move to amend the budget to that number. Now does that go include the transportation and 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 the capital costs and everything in there? Uh, because I know when we voted it before it was just one number that included all three different components. I don't think there was a capital, but you remember? No, that that in, that includes the tram, transportation expenses as well. Okay, but no capital improvements though. Okay, because we're not going to have to pay those until the following year. But the question I have is, are they going to come back when the when the state aid comes back? We're going to have a sufficient funds to cover that deficit because we're planning on so much in state aid. All right, and if they cut the chapter 70 and the transportation aid, we're gonna to have to come up with another two or 300,000 to make the thing work. Are we fit to do that? Yeah, I think we are. So right now um, we have 993,000 in school choice, uh, of which 110 of that will be used to cover the remaining amount that we need to get level funded so that we don't have to cut any personnel. Yeah. Um, so we'll be looking at about 880,000 plus we will have um, at least 570,000 that we can have certified in E&D. So I think we're in a good position. You know, we obviously don't want to use all of our reserves next year because FY22 could be more challenging and, you know, never mind looking ahead beyond that. But, you know, I do think that if we had to use another 300,000 to cover any Chapter 70 or transportation cuts, we'd still be in a healthy place. Well, my main concern is last time we, we cut the budget at the request of the administ the towns and what have you, uh, they, they were able to find an awful lot of money in the towns to pay bonuses. And, you know, once we cut this, we're done. All right? We won't be able to, we're gonna have to take it out of whatever those two funds are. But I don't know, I'm a short timer. So I'll make the motion we modify the budget to the eleven million four sixty six and change. Was that the number? Shelly? Uh, Shelly, could you uh can you text it? Can you put it in the chat box the exact number so that sure uh, and Phil has his hand up. I don't know if everyone can see that. So um just a couple of points. I think you know just as it's so important the way we do budgets, you know, with transparency that when we're cutting the budget, that it has to be transparent too. And I think one of the most important things that we can do as school committee members throughout this process is to put the human face on what numbers are and what, what you know, because if, 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 if it's only ever about numbers, the school is always going to um, be subject to additional cuts. It, it's, and so what I don't want to do is sort of, go to level funding and not have the story of what that means to tell at town meeting. So I would much prefer the, the, the motions be made at town meeting to stick with our original number um, on the warrants um, along with the communication uh, to, to the select boards that this is what the number is to be made, you know, um, by motion on town meeting. But um, you know, it, 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 it serves to also immunize the school from further town meeting floor cuts when you can be up there talking about what this cut that we're agreeing to make, um, what that really means in, in the human the human story of it. So that's what if I think. Bob, if I might, you know, yeah. I just I just like to reiterate the point that I was making before about I think I think it would be a mistake for us to try to amend that on town meeting floor. Some of it looks like three of these town meetings are going to take place in the parking lot. 
So you're not even going to have the opportunity to look at who you're talking to. If we don't prepare a number and give the same number to all four towns, we're making a critical, critical mistake in the way this thing is. It's going to turn into a scramble. We need to take the lead on this thing and say, look, we've, we've listened to you. We're coming to a zero-based budget. These are the numbers. This is what we'd like you to do. Otherwise, we are asking, human face or not, we are asking for a big problem. And I agree with every word you said, but and, and, but, but I think we have to know what you're saying, Phil. But it's we, a we have, we, we have to we hold have on, to hold on. Whole, we have to come up with the whole number, um, but we, and it has to be consistent. We have to do all that, but it's super important that we tell the story about what the cuts mean. That's all. Well, but I think we. I don't want to have any anything where one town's going to appropriate a different number. There you, you know, go. One, right. So we go together because. Right. I'm going to be here. You guys are going to have to figure it out after I'm gone. But we're better off doing one number. But I just want to make sure that they don't decide to take all kinds of money to pay bonuses to their employees. Why we cut a lot of stuff that we shouldn't be cutting. I agree, I agree both with Bob and Bill. And I'd like to, for that, I'd just like to second uh, Bob's motion and, and vote on that uh, 11 million um, number. You know, it takes a two-thirds vote, Bobby, I believe, because it's a budget. Yep. So we have a first and second for the uh, – let me just pull the thing up. It's so like 11 million. 11 million, 466, 392. And, Shelly, correct me if I'm wrong, and that's and that's – the, we're at cutting. We still have like point ninety ninety four percent still still there. This is not a level funded eleven million four sixty six three ninety two. So the eleven million four sixty six three ninety two is the number that will bring us to level funding. Oh, it is okay. The hundred and ten thousand that remains, we need to either make additional cuts, which we don't want to do at this point or we need to fund it with another funding source. But we're agreeing that we want to get to level funding and we will come up with the solution on how to do that. <laughs> so it's 11466392 and how much was the pennies? No pennies. Okay. We spent them. Hey, Shelly, but we're, we're saying that we're going to use, we're not going back to rewrite this. We're, we're saying we're going to use um, school choice to offset the the other one hundred and ten thousand. So we did a, so we did a balanced and as was, was kind of coming out. I just had many side conversations with many of you. A balanced approach of some 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 of our increases, some of our expansion, and then some of our reserves kind of balanced together. I think the other thing is that if we do have a voted budget, we just want to be transparent that we are going to take the extra money that could have been rolled over that we would have spent in E and D this year. We, we froze those accounts and we're going to put those, we're going to use the, uh, we're, going to, we're going to put it into school choice and carry the school choice account forward. I just want to be very transparent about that because I, I hear the rumors of the people saying in the community, well, you're just shifting money around and that kind of stuff. But I want to be transparent about that, that because if we have to, if we can't roll the full 5% because we froze some of those capital projects and because um, we have an unknown coming forward and we could have gone to a 112 budget instead. Um, you know, that we're going to we're going to roll that into school choice and move that money forward as well, just so that everybody knows what's going on there. Um, but but on the projects that we put off because of the freeze, have we signed contracts on or issued purchase orders? No. If we do issue purchase orders for that stuff before the June 30th, we can encumber that money and we don't have to move or put it anywhere else. So, I mean, it does become a question that, you know, I brought it to the um, – I brought it to the, the finance subcommittee here. Okay, so we did do a freeze on that. I mean, I was playing all caution, obviously, when this thing rolled out. Um, I guess my recommendation would be to see what the state numbers are to come out, and then we can decide whether or not we move forward to finish those capital projects. Um, that's my re my thoughts on that. But, you know, there's $84,000 with capital projects remaining. I'm hoping we'll come in under that, but that's what we have budgeted to spend on those 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 things. But 
I think probably the prudent thing would be right now is to wait to see what the state budget is and see how everything shakes out before we use that. We, we hold on to the 84,000 and just looking if everybody else agrees because you technically voted for us to spend that money. So me stopping the spending of that money kind of, I guess technically you could be upset with me. Um, so you, you follow what I'm saying there? So do we, do people agree with uh, that as well? Yes, I do. I guess say something if you disagree. <laughs> no, just just watch it, and if if we uh, once you know, you can issue the purchase orders in June, and uh, we can encumber the money, or you can transfer it to the other. All right. What, I don't believe just so everybody knows. I don't think we're going to get a state budget until after uh, July one, and they're saying even into August by the time they get all the figures and all that kind of worked out because. Um, and, then, and then there were some people that were even more pessimistic than that. Were saying, "Yeah, by the time they really work it out, it's gonna be it's gonna be September into October." So, you know, those are the you know the pessimistic people versus the optimistic people. So, which is a lot of that going on now. So we have a first and a second, right? Sorry, Bob. Yeah, vote and needs two thirds. I I know, Mister Mister Decker, Bob Halla. Yes, it, uh, this is a roll call. Okay, so everybody turn it on. Bill Smith. Yes. Judy. Yes. Robert Decker. Yes. Damien. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Bill. Yes. Keith. Yes. Mary. Yes. And Olivia. I'm required to abstain. Abstain. Okay. I think we got two thirds there, Mr. Decker. Well, I kind of figured we would, but I, we just got to make sure that it's reported. I have my phone. I have a I have an email on my phone with the weighted vote and stuff. So, well, there was only one abstention. Did anybody vote against it? Nope. Okay, not a problem. I want to I want to thank Shelley and uh, Darius. Um, I know we're not done with this yet, but. It's, oh, it's, 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 a, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Shelly's working on five, um, on five of them. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. So, so we're all done with that. And we're going to go on to uh, policies. Is that, is that right? Mr. Uh, Mr. Darius? Yep. I mean, we have, they're pretty basic ones. I have um, removed the public comment one. So I've been back and forth with the attorney. I don't have that. I'll be honest. It hasn't been on my list to, to chase him down on. I've been chasing down a lot of other stuff. So I'll get it back on my list. But okay. um, the other the other four were, you know, repetitive ones that we probably could move, just move forward. Well, if you want to, we can move forward on um, the basic construction, which has been removed because it's redundant. Um, the insurance program has been removed because of state law. The guidance program has been, been removed because redundancy, and then student gifts and solicitations has been removed because of the ethics law. So, really basic, really basic removals to clean up our our uh, policy book. And then I will get the uh, the last one that we had there was uh, the um, we have to get the whole rewording from the attorney regarding a uh, public comment. So, so I did, we're going to vote on this all in one, and we're going to make a motion. I need a motion and a second. So let me I say, move. Mr. Decker. Oh. And who's second? Second. I'll second. I'll second. Mr. Smith. Oh. And we're going to do another roll call, okay? Sorry. Bob Halley, yes. Bill? Yep. Judy? Yes. Robert Decker? Yes. Damian? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Bill? Yes. Keith? Yes. Mary? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Thank you. So now we're going to go on to new business. And we're going to get an update on graduation and see senior events. Darius? Or George? George? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. No, it's, 
Fine. Sorry, George. No, don't worry about it. Uh, so just so everybody knows, so uh, we're currently in the process of planning uh, graduation. Uh, we've slated the week of August 2nd through the 8th uh, for seniors and their families to put aside. We're hoping that the social distancing um, uh, restrictions will be eased by then. So the plan right now is to have the graduation on Saturday, uh, August 8th at 9 a.m. Uh, here at Frontier. Uh, we're also in the uh, we're also in the process of um, rescheduling the prom. Currently, it's rescheduled right now for August sixth, uh, and we're hoping to have some kind of a senior activity uh, that week as well. And we're planning on doing our awards night virtually also during that week. So we're moving ahead with that. We've already met a, a couple times as um, as as a, as a team. Um, uh, our our senior class advisor Colin Hosley is doing a wonderful job. Um, our assistant principal uh, Scott Dredge is also doing a wonderful job. Uh, facilitating facilitating all of this and, and putting it all together. So we're hopeful uh, that this that we're able to move forward with with this plan. Um, if if we're unable to to move forward with this plan, if 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 the the social distancing norms don't get if if they stay in place, we're going to have to move to a virtual uh, to a virtual uh, program. But but we've got our fingers crossed. So just so you know, that's where we are right now with that with those plans. George, I'll go with you to every senior's house and we'll deliver the diplomas to them. I know, and we've we've been signing them as well. So you'll you'll get them soon, Bob. Yeah. Let me I know. It's also, in, okay. Okay. I think it's I think it's also important to to note that you know Scott and George you know worked worked with the students on this. This is not some idea that came out of the side. They talked to the student leadership and so on and so forth, and they found out what they wanted. So um, no decision is going to make everybody happy. I just want to know, but the, the, the kids really kind of were uh, a key component in the decision making of this. This is really what they wanted. Um, as a whole. Um, so just kind of if people are wondering, because different communities are going to start doing different things and you're going to get questions. Why did we do it this way and not this way, and not that way? Because we let the student leadership um, kind of dictate the direction. So um, I think that's important. It's important to know that that was the yeah, that yeah, is. crux of how that decision was made. Okay. Um, George, do you want to, are you going to give the next update on curriculum and instruction during the COVID-19 or is it I Darius' turn? That no, I'm, uh, it's still it's still my turn, and it's <laughs> just just uh, just a brief update. Things things are continuing as planned. Uh, remote learning is still going on. Once again, with uh, quarter four, we we've um, moved towards a credit no credit uh, system. Um, you know, and uh, you know things are things are still going in the right direction. So we're still we're still working on that. Um, and I'm not sure if uh, anybody else wants to add anything, but basically, it's things are going as uh, as planned currently. Okay. Just so if I can add in on the other COVID related issues. So one of the things that probably should have been as an, a separate line item, but um, kind of run all other payments by all of you. And so I want to run this one as well. Um, we have spring coaches that um, did not have their season. And I am proposing that we pay um, some of those not all the coaches, because some of the lower level coaches probably did not have it, but there a lot of the coaches did some pre-planning, they had pre-season meetings, they ordered materials. And so to recognize their, their work, I'd like to pay them 10% of their coaching stipend um, for the spring. Um, that will co that costs just around $3,000. We are probably going to save about, you can do the math right there, hopefully, about $30,000 in coaches' um, salaries this spring because we did um, unfortunately, not having the, uh, the sports season. So um, that's what I was looking to do. And I was looking, I ran all the other ones by you. So I think it's probably important that I finish out that process with you. So um, I have one question. Is the union signed off because all those positions are included in their contract? I, I met with the union and Allison's nodding her head yes. And she um, agreed that that, that was a, a fair. Uh, well, you can say what you said, sir, Allison. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, since since there were there were some um, coaches that did do some work, um, it's not eliminating anything. It's just that they didn't happen, and they're not year long stipend positions. So um, the union agrees that you know giving a a portion is is generous, um, and we understand the rest of the stipends won't be won't be covered for the spring sports. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to pay the 10% to the coaches. Second. Oh, excuse me. 
Bob, I, I would rather abstain. I'm sorry, I can't second. Okay. So I'll guess, second. Who's in a second? I will. I will. Amen. Amen. So the um, the only other thing is now these are not only coaches, but this has also to do with like uh, spring uh, drama and stuff. So there, there are other stipend positions, and Alice and I went through them all, and there were two others that would not be paid as well through that. Um, the other club ones, many of them have started, and so we've asked, um, George is following up with all those receiving stipends that they continue to um, do things remotely with those students, and, and however their club is, keep them engaged to remain, to earn the, the last quarter of their stipend. So if they were doing, you know, um, <laughs> French club I'll throw out there that they're doing something online um, or or something with them and that kind of thing. And they're reporting back to George on that. Um, there are two other stipends in there that aren't, I don't have that up in front of me. So. Okay. The, um, I had a question. I know, I know what they are. Um, one was the ultimate Frisbee and the other was the spring drama production. Um, I think those were the, those were the two. Thank you, Allison. Bob. Yes. Are we going to have a separate conversation about transportation? We can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've had it. I've had it asked to me what 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 is the story with the transportation contract? So I just sure. I thought we ought to have that conversation. Yep. Well, let's, let's finish up the what's uh, let's vote yeah. on this first. We have a first and a second. We got to do another roll call. Uh, me. Yes. Bill. Abstain. Abstain, okay. Judy? Yes. Robert? Yes. Damien? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Phil? Yes. Keith? Yes. Mary? Yes. And Olivia? Abstain. Abstain, okay. And... You want to talk about the transportation before we go to the next thing, Darius? Sure. We, um, myself and um, Bob and Ken Cutterback, the chairs of the 238 uh, and uh, what are you guys, Frontier? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whew, it's only Tuesday. Um, we did uh, create, uh, amend the contract with Ripco Transportation. He is paying his, um, or they, this kind of family running, are paying their employees through this. So we did um, ask for a fuel credit back. And so we were paid, um, so we were getting a fuel credit back um, from the contract. So uh, a fuel not being used. So was that so like, not, what's that? Was that like $214 a day or something like that? Just to let people know or? Yep. And that's that was not exactly a, what it was. It wasn't a, that's not $214 a day for Frontier, though. That's across all five districts or all five schools. I should have said that. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure everybody understood that. So what does Frontier cost? <laughs> uh. Of course you asked me that question. <laughs> well, you know it comes. <laughs> oh, give me a second. I'll find it. Bob, we'll come back to you next week, okay? Well, I'll tell you what. Unless you hold another meeting between now and uh, June 8th, you're not going to see me again. We've already heard this many times, Bob. You told me that 25 years ago and you came back. So <laughs> Frontier is uh, about $101 a day. And so what will we be paying them a day? It's 101 reduction. It's 101 reduction, yes. And I don't have the daily calculation because we pay them in 10 equal installments. So um, I don't have that number off the top of my head. Is that okay, Robert? I. Uh, it's going to be. Yeah, I'll abstain. Okay. We're not vote. We're not voting on it. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Let's go to the next thing. Uh, joint meeting discussion. Uh, Darius, you want to take the lead on this? <laughs> yep. So, um, where the heck do I go? Um, 
Oh, what, what I wanted to talk about is that, you know, we are, you know, the next question I know a lot of people on people's minds are what's happening with next fall, that kind of thing. You know, I met with the administrator's team today. We're starting to plan how we're going to plan to do it. I think it's a little early to start rolling out plans of separating students and mixed, all these crazy schedules that you're reading about, um, you know, without, without um, kind of having, uh, we got a long way to go before we get there. So we're starting to kind of plan out what it's going to look like. What our planning is going to look like and when we're going to approach each question as it comes up but so right now i kind of told them it's budget week or budget weeks these next two weeks is really budget focused and um you know as you know i think compliments for you know Deli and i but our principals are also being pulled into multiple meetings about what are they going to cut and then also being prepared to cut you know i didn't just ask them to show me what they have here but they had to prepare much further down the, the, the road um, if things were worse off. So um, a lot of work is taking place there and it's a lot very stressful. And so, um, like I said, so we, we are creating a plan, a plan to plan um, what next year is gonna look like, but there's so many unknowns right now um, that we can only kind of create a structure of, you know, the different areas that we're gonna have to address and who's gonna address them in that moment. So that kind of thing. The other two things just, I, just, I put them on a new business because I didn't know where to put them, but, I gotta give you a, a superintendent evaluation to do. And I, it's not about me. I'd rather just not do it, but I have to fill out something to submit to the state that it was done. So um, I'm gonna, I'll be sending out when I get some time. I'll, I'll be doing the same format as I did before. The the, the quick uh, survey monk. No, it wasn't survey monkey. The Google survey form. I'll try to do some summaries on each section to give you some kind of thing, um, and you can get feedback there, and then we'll tally it and send it in and then we'll follow up in a meeting to go over it. Um, the other one is that school calendars have not been created yet. Um, you know, when, of when the first day of schools, I met with, we did some, we did, uh, for those of you who aren't parents in the elementaries, each elementary school did a parent meeting night in the last few weeks. And so I got on that and I basically told parents um, when the question came up, that you can expect us to be going back to school the last week in August, more to come. So, um, don't don't make your your vacation plans the last week of August. Who does? Um, but anyway, but in that is also professional development, and, and we're getting stalled there is because we really don't we don't know what next year looks like. And if we're gonna make if we're gonna have to do any kind of hybrid schedule, or if we're gonna have to continue with remote learning and some sort of mixture there, um, we're gonna have to do some professional development. So we may have to look at those early releases. Unmuting yourself. Mute you again. Um, and um, so that's what we've been kind of, I don't want to say fighting about. That's what we've been discussing about internally, administrative wise. So, you know, looking about what that's going to look like next year. So that's kind of, uh, we need to put that together in the next few weeks. And we're going to have to have a joint meeting to do that because calendars is a joint discussion. So I guess what I'm seeing here, and I'm, I'll take input from you guys. Um, is we're going to get through this kind of this budget surge of meetings because many of you are also on the other committees as well. Um, we'll get through this budget surge and then have a joint meeting in, in June where we'll talk about um, you know what next year. Well, I may have a better idea what next year looks like. We also talk about what summer looks like and and those other in those professional development. Just a quick question on the uh, on the uh, calendar, and I know that. Uh, it's premature right now, and we're dealing with the budget right now. But when you uh, commented on uh, the last week of August starting, the calendar follows what we've done the last couple of years. It's a very late Labor Day this year. I think it's September 7th. So if we followed that same pattern we've been in the previous years, wouldn't school probably start not until September 1st or 2nd? Yes and no. What's nice, what's nice being at my desk is I have things. Um, we, the, again, the drafting of the calendar, we were looking at um, starting early, coming back on that Wednesday the 28th. Even though Labor Day is later, um, I think we're going to have a lot of parents that are going to want their kids back at school as soon as possible if we have that, if we have a normal. A normal I, yeah, I agree. I thought, back to here. It would be great if they started early. I thought with the, with the teacher's contract, they couldn't start like three days prior to Labor Day weekend or something like it's that. It's the last Wednesday. You can't start before the last Wednesday in August. Oh, okay. That's yeah. nothing to do with so, Labor Day. 
Yeah, school can't start. So we usually start the Tuesday. Sometimes we've negotiated with them to start even earlier, depending on when things kind of fall fall as well. Um, you know, in, in this calendar, we kind of have to go through because we were looking at doing the uh, the the long Labor Day weekend again, do in a four day week, and you know we're gonna have to look at it again because that might be a little different, or maybe it won't. We'll have to see. But the idea, the the one concern was how do we deliver professional development um, to teachers if we're doing a different model? We may have to front load some of that and and working on that. So we're working on that, but. Um, you know, so the, the draft that we have is kind of that we had to go to the joint meeting is kind of uh, out the out the window right now. We're in holding and trying to see what we're going to need. Um, that kind of thing. So. I, I just want to chime in before when we used to give them a three day, a four day weekend for Labor Day. We also started school on that Wednesday and they went to school Wednesday and Thursday and they and they had Friday through. Since if we're going to start if we're going to start on the 27th. My personal opinion, if you have a three-day weekend, you have a three-day weekend. I wouldn't make it a four-day weekend because I think we've had we had a little flack about that in the past when it was a four-day weekend, but that's just my opinion. So I, I don't know how everybody else feels about it. So I would only caution not to go too far down the calendar road because we do that together at the joint meeting where everybody gets to have their opinions from that kind of thing. Yep. Um, and plus, I can't show you my statistics about how families like the 40 weekend. <laughs> Baird, I guess we'll just discuss it during the joint meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and the other, the other kind of conversations we're, we're having is that uh, students coming back, you know, how many days do we go in a row? Um, should we have a shortened week? You talk about stamina, you especially talk about younger kids who haven't been in a building as long. It's going to be very tiring, I think. Um, but those are, some people can say that's kind of a fluff conversation. Some people are going to say that that's absolutely the truth. So kind of what's what the balance of that's going to be as well. And that's where the elementary is really kind of chime in because if you have a first grader who hasn't been to school in now six months or a second grader um, and they have to go five days straight of full days, that, that, that might be something worth talking about, about how we, how we address that. But anyway, we'll let the, we'll let the elementaries kind of chime in on that perspective. Um, anyway, so those things are coming. That's I just wanted to throw that. That's I just threw that in there. I guess that could have been part of my report too, but um, that's it for me. In in the uh, school committee calendar, is that straightforward? It's with it as well, you know. And well, again, we'll be looking at whether or not um, we can't do the stacked meetings. That's why we moved all your other meetings for those of you on both meetings. We can't do the stacked meetings re um, virtually. <laughs> Um, Trevor's afraid that the computer is going to get a virus. The, uh, the, uh, um, it, we couldn't do the stack meetings there. So if we're having still doing virtual meetings in September, we probably shouldn't do the stack meetings. Um, and it might, you know, we'll have to see how that works out. It'd be, the stack meetings did make it a little bit easier on mine and I imagine Shelly's families, um, trying to get out to all those meetings with their families, whatever. But if we're doing virtual starting early in the day makes it so we can get home as well. So, and maybe we do a combination, maybe this virtual thing sticks. That's another thing to, to plug into people's ears. Maybe we rotate meetings or those kind of things. And we do some of our meetings virtually, um, but that's, that's your, it's your meeting. You guys get to decide that, but I'll plant that seed for discussion. I'll, I'll add, that. I, like the, I like that because I can do these meetings in a hotel room when I'm working. <laughs> right. I agree. That's true. So anyway, we, we can discuss that too, because that could also be, I mean, I think it's important to come together at times, but it's also in a, on a January freezing cold night, it might be easier to talk about this stuff from the warmth of the fireplace. But I don't know, it's a new world. Okay, we're, all, we're just gonna go to reports. I have nothing. Uh, Lynn, is the collaborative doing anything? Uh, nope, we have. Okay. We had <laughs> I I ask. <laughs> had an online meeting a couple of months ago. But okay. Nothing to report, really. Okay. Just, side note: Collaborative is um, hosting our superintendent meetings that we have every Wednesday, um, which has been very helpful. Just on, on a side note, that they're, you know, they're helping out in that regard. So. George, you have anything for us other than what you filled us in on? Nothing additional. No, thanks, Bob. Thank you. And and Darius, you're all set? I'm all set too. Okay. Hey, thanks everybody.
And uh, what, what, Mr. Decker? Hey, move we adjourn. Okay. Well, could I just say before you all adjourn, I just can't thank you guys enough for all you're doing for the towns. Very much appreciate it. Thank you, Trevor. Thanks, Trevor. I think we have to do a, we have to do a roll call. Yeah, yeah okay. technically do. And since we voted vote budget, I would suggest we do it correctly. Okay. Robert, yes, Bill. Yep. Judy. Yep. Mr. Decker. Yes. Damien. Yes. Lynn. Yeah. Phil. Yes. Keith. Yes. Mary. Yes. And Olivia. Yes. Good night, everybody.